Right, guys, so today is going to be a little bit unusual video because uh, this is a kind of outside of what I'm usually talking about. So what I'm usually talking about, risk management, fixed income, all this stuff, what I want to talk about today is about accounting. And what, why, what I'm going to specifically discuss in this short video, okay, will be an accounting method to value equity, which came into, you know, which is kind of the, the, the official guideline now for accounting methods, and this is a Bexel method. Why is it interesting to me? Okay, you will understand when I will start to talk about this in the video. So, what, what is the problem that, uh, you know, this uh, Bexel method is trying to address? So, Basically, uh, you know, if you're an employee in a high-tech company, or in any other company for that matter, okay, which is not publicly traded, so basically let's say it's a privately held company, The, inter the eternal question that people are faced with, okay, how much those bonuses which are given to us, how much are th do they worth? So basically, let's say you're getting an employee stock option, you want to know, okay, you granted this employee stock option, how much is it worth? Is it worth zero dollars? Is it worth $10? Is it worth $10,000? And of course, it's a very important question. And a lot of high-tech companies or a, a lot of companies which are privately managed are now issuing those kind of, you know, equi you know equity-related securities. They issue employee stock option, okay? And I don't want to discuss what is employee stock option exactly, but I assume that whoever watches this video knows exactly what I'm talking about, okay? now. How do you value these kind of securities? Why, uh, for accounting purposes, how do we value them? Because they usually are not publicly traded. You just cannot go and sell those employee stock options on an open market, so you don't know how much they worth, okay? So here, herein, uh, where this uh, method was designed. Now, this method is a little bit more general than just valuing employee stock options. This method is actually very ambitious in valuing any equity related securities of a company. And the idea is as follows, okay? Suppose you have the common, the common equity of a company. This is your common equity. And you have a lot of securities which are linked to this common equity company. So it can be, for example, convertible preferreds. Okay. It can be, for example, employee stock options. And it also can be the usual common shares. Now, when all these guys are taken together, you are actually getting the, the, the common equity. Because if, for example, you have an option and the option expires, okay, you need to issue and, and you want to satisfy, uh, you know, the shares of the company, the employee, to give them this... Uh, you know, shares because the option is expire, let's say that it's in the money, you need to issue more shares. And I'm going to show a small example of how this is supposed to work, okay? So this is going to affect the price of your share, the price of your common equity of the company, okay? So how do you, now, from that, okay, it doesn't help us that much because it looks very, very complicated. How do you actually value something like, you know, some, some, some kahuna like that, okay? So here's the idea, and this is a very neat idea. So basically, e suppose 
that you have a corporate action. So let's say, what is a corporate action? Let's say merger and acquisition. Let's say, you know, buyout. Or even in the most extreme case, a bankruptcy. Now, a lot of times, these sections of merger acquisitions buyout are actually issuing new shares. Usually, for example, they can issue, for example, convertible preferreds. So what is a convertible preferred? A convertible preferred is a preferred where you're paying, you know, where you're paying the money, you're paying the interest, but in certain, in certain uh, space of time, you have the option to convert it into an equity. Okay? Or, for example, they can issue a new employee, a new stock option. For example, if it's a manager, management buyout, okay, they can take and they can issue those options to the managers to incentivize performance. So if the company, after the manager buyout, is going to perform very, very well, those managers, because they hold these stocks, they can actually get a lot of money in. Okay? Now, the key is that when you have this corporate action, this corporate action does not include the entire common equity, but what is happening is that part of the capital structure, part of the common equity is getting impacted. So for example, let's say that you have here one share, okay, and you don't know how much it costs, okay? Now, let's say that you have basically this kind of issuance of a, of a corporate action, and this one share is going to be split into two shares. Let's say two shares here. And now, because of the corporate action, the, whoever does this corporate action tells you that this share costs every one of them, every one of those two shares costs $0.5. Now, from here, you, in, you can infer what this one share was before the split, and of course, this was worth $1, for example, okay? So this is a very simple example that shows you that when you have a corporate action and, you, and during this corporate action, you have certain price discovery, okay? Then you can infer back to what the common equity was worth before this corporate action. Now, why is it interesting? It is interesting because if you know what, what is the price of the common equity, okay, during the buyout or before the buyout, you can actually then price the entire capital structure, which doesn't actually has anything to do with this corporate action. So if you have, let's say, some employee stock options and you know the common equity, you can use here some sort of methodology to, to, to price this employee stock. So for accounting purposes, okay, this is the essence of what is happening. What is happening is that you have this kind of corporate action. From that, you can infer what happens with the common equity, okay, through, you know, through, um, through this kind of a sm simple example. And from that, you can infer exactly what happens with all your, you know, with all your uh, other, other uh, securities, which are associated with these equities, okay? Now, it looks very, very kind of uh, cumbersome, okay? How do you actually go from this small corporate action to finding com common equity and maybe finding the price of all the securities? Well, for that, you want to actually uh, implement what we call the Black-Scholes framework. So one way to do it, okay, is through a device called Monte Carlo simulation. Let me just explain briefly what is this all about. So what is a Monte Carlo simulation? So 
So you start with a, with a given equity, and you assume a certain random process associated with this equity. Okay? Usually this process that we assume for this equity or for the churn for this equity, the normal distribution, which evolves through time. So normal distribution, the graph is something like that. So it has an expectation and it has what we call a volatility. Now, what you do with this random process, you're simulating this equity, let's say after a certain time, amount of time, let's say one year. And then you have a lot of scenarios, okay, using this random process, where in the good state of the world, let's say here, the equity worth $100, but in the bad state of the world, it is just going to go to bankruptcy. So a lot of those scenarios will be somewhere in the middle. This will be my benign state of the world. Now, what happens usually, okay, that you basically say to yourself, okay, let's say that now I have my equity, okay, and I'm simulating this kind of, uh, I'm simulating this kind of scenarios. Let's say I simulate thousand scenarios. What is important that it's at, 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 at each of these scenario, okay, you know exactly the price of the equity if you start here. So if you know the price here, let's say the price here is $20 and you simulate it, you know exactly what will be the price at each of those scenarios. Okay? Now, when there is a corporate action, you can act and you know the price of equity, you can actually very easily to determine, you are going to determine very easily what is going to be the price of each of the security which is associated we, we, which are associated with this equity in this scenario. For example, let's say that you have a warrant that will expire after one year. Let's say you have a warrant which is expired after one year and you have one share. Okay, and let's say that uh, uh, for this warrant, the strike price for this warrant is going to be, let's say, $50, okay? So now, let's say that you are having, uh, that you have an equity here with $100, and now you want to incorporate this, uh, this warrant, okay? So, may so maybe here, you have one share, and now what you want to do, you want to actually maybe uh, uh, to issue another share. So this $100 is going to go 100 divided by two, let's say it's going to be $50, because you have two shares, one share from the equity, another share from the warrant, Okay, so let's say it's just for the sake of, of example, okay? It, it might be more complicated, but I just want you to get the idea. So this $50 will actually, uh, and, the, and the warrant uh, strike at $50, so 50 minus 50 is zero. So the warrant will be worth zero. However, if this equity would be 120 in another simulated scenario, this warrant is, is going to be much more interesting because now it's going to be worth $10, $10 a piece, okay? So from that perspective, if you know here the equity value in each one of those things, you can price exactly the entire capital structure of all the guys which are actually uh, related to this equity. For example, if you have another example, if you have, let's say, convertible preferred. Okay? You can exactly say to yourself, okay, if I have a convertible preferred, I will pay the, and uh, I pay interest until here, and here I have the option maybe to convert this preferred to something else, okay? So now you can do the, the mental calculation that from here on, you can either pay your, your principal like a bond, okay, and then it will be one price, but if you convert, you may get another price. So for example, here, if you go, if you, if you, if you're looking on this point in time and you're looking on the preferred and you're inferring the price of the preferred, if it's not converted to be $40, okay, but if it's converted, 
you and the, and the equity, let's say, is $120, one share. Now, you issue another share, so it's going to be $60 a piece. You see that it's going to be actually $60 a piece versus $40 a piece. Oh, my God, I'm going to convert, and I'm going to, to get the $60 versus the $40. However, if the equity is not $120 in this scenario, but it's only, let's say, going to be uh, $30, because it's a best scenario, you are not going to you are not going to convert because you think that in this case, the what you are going to pay is going to be you know the price of this preferred is forty dollars. So once again, you are not going to convert. So in the good state, this guy is going to be sixty dollars. In a bad state, it's going to be forty dollars for this convertible preferred. So the idea here is that when you have something like that. Okay, you can look on the entire hierarchy of the capital structure, of the common capital structure, right? We're not taking debt securities here. We are now just concentrating on the common equity. You can actually look on these scenarios, okay? And you can, at each point in time, you can say exactly what is the price of each security, okay, given that you started with a certain equity price. Because you, if you know the equity price, you know the equity price at, as a, of the common share er, at every at each point in time here after one year, and then you can just price it. Just price it using the you know using your your hierarchy. So this is going to be what they call a waterfall a waterfall pricing. It is very similar to what we have in the corporate in the corporate structure where you have senior bonds and you have uh, junior bonds. So in each point in time, the senior bonds will, pay be, will be paid first and junior bonds will be paid uh, later if there is something which is left to the junior bonds. So for example, if the entire company is $100 and the, junior and the senior bond is $90 and the junior bond is $20, the $90 will be money good. But then the $100 for the junior bonds is going to be just $10, right? Because 100 minus 90 is 10, and you have $20 here of debt obligation. So the company, for, from, the junior, from the point of view of junior bonds, they will not be worth $20 anymore. They will be worth $10. So there will be a haircut of 50%. So the water, it's a waterfall, right? You start with, a, with a, you know, with a, it's like a water that flows. So the, you start, you give money to here, then whatever water is left is going to go to the next level of the waterfall, etc., etc., etc. Tuck, 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 tuck. And the common equity, okay, and the common equity principle is exactly the same. So now you are looking at the entire capital structure of common equity. You are, you are throwing in sto stock options, everything, and you are actually can price them at the end, at each of these scenarios, if you know the initial equity price. In particular, okay, you can actually price a, this entire capital structure here. How? By, look, by taking the average of each of these securities and giving them, you know, the average of these securities and discount them, discounting them back. So for example, you have, let's say, a, co a, convertible, a convertible bond, a convertible preferred. And let's say we have two scenarios. In, w in one scenario, it's $60 here. And another scenario we said is $40. So the average price here will be $50. And then you take the $50 and discount it back because uh, you have an interest, let's say, of 5%. So you have 50 divided by 105. And this is going to be the price of your convertible preferred here. Okay? So the equity price that you start with, the common equity price that you start is, is basically one rings and rules them all like in Tolkien. Okay, you know exactly what is the price of every other security when you start with the equity price now, today. Okay, now, here comes the real kicker. You have a price discovery here of a certain security which is coming from the, you know, from the capital structure. So what happens here is that when you go back to, to, this, to this picture, okay, you know what is the price what, what is the price that you expect for this guy that came from the merger and acquisition so now you're doing it back solve backwards that's why you know that it's called the back solve method you start not with the equity itself but you start with the price discovery of every security when your equity is your fundamental price so you start you doing this scenario and then 
given an equity price, you can find the price discovery, you can do the price discovery for this security. So for example, if I have this convertible preferred, which is kind of $30, which says that it's, it's going to be $50, $50 is going to correspond here to a starting price of $20 per equity. Now let's say that the starting price is not $20, but $30, and then this convertible preferred is going to be not $50, but $55. Now, in reality, this convertible preferred, when you do this kind of scenario analysis, is when you do this kind of an, of an action and you observe it on the market, is let's say $70, which is going to correspond here to initial price of equity, not of 20, 30, but of $100. Oh my God, you know? So, if you start with $100 for equity and you do this and you go and you look on this scenario analysis and you look on the convertible preferred that we, that we, have, that we have here, it will actually co coincide with the price that you have uh, through, the, you know, through the merger and acquisition through this corporate action. So these corporate actions okay, determine going backwards the equity price. And that's the essence of the back solve method. You start with the price discovery, but not of the equity itself, but some part of the capital structure, okay? And then using this scenario analysis, where it's simulating hundreds of scenarios, you discover what is, the e what is the initial equity price that will correspond to this price discovery, to this price discovery that you observe. Just like here, the convertible preferred, let's say, was $100, uh, whatever we said, $70, it corresponded to $100 when you started it here, okay? These scenarios, when you started with $100 here and you do this scenario analysis, you're going to get a $70 here, which will go through this price discovery, okay? The one thing that this method doesn't take into account are debt securities. So if you say, for example, you issue a bond, okay, instead of, the, instead of an equity, how it is going to reflect on the entire capital structure? Because you have to take bonds into account. Because if you issue a lot of debt, your equity price is going to go dra dramatically lower, okay? We will talk about this in the next video, which is just a proposal. The debt security incorporation is not part of the accounting, you know, uh, guidance that we have now. I'm just going to talk about this in the next video just to show you that exactly the same analysis can give us, can incorporate the debt securities as well, okay? So summarizing, what is this back solve method? So you start with a, with a price discovery of a corporate action. You go, uh, in order to, uh, how you determine it, you're going to the common equity price, you're doing this scenario analysis, what they say is the Black-Scholes method. The Black-Scholes method is exactly this. You, you start with the equity, which is where returns are normally distributed, and you do this kind of hundreds of scenarios. You have good state of the world, you have bad state of the world. In each scenario, you can price exactly your entire common capital structure, common equity capital structure, be it employee stock runs, convertible preferreds, everything you wanted, because you know your initial equity structure. Ec capital equity structure. Then, okay, so now, so then you, you say, okay, the average of these guys, of all the price of these scenarios, right, for each security, let's say an employee stock option, you take the average of price of all these, okay, you go back, you discount it back using your interest, let's say 2%, whatever the interest rate now, you're getting the present price, okay, by looking at the average of all these scenarios. Now, when you have a price discovery, when you are actually doing some merger acquisition or something, you have a discovery of the price discovery. You, you have a discovery of a price of a certain security, be it a preferred, be it a options, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. And then you are going to say, okay, now I'm going to go backwards. I know this guy now, I'm going to run this scenario by Plugging in different equity, different equity prices, I can actually get a graph of, uh, you know, of different uh, discoveries for this security, and one of them is going to match my equity price, okay? So it's a backward method. It's like solving an equation. So let's say you know that x plus 1, x plus 1 equals 5, 
okay? And then you infer that x equals 4. This is exactly what's happening. It cannot be simpler than that. Now, it is true that the implementation is little involved, okay? You cannot just do it, you know, in a, in a very straightforward method because you have a lot of assumptions here, equity prices, you know, volatilities and whatnot, okay? So, but I'm not uh, worried about implementation per se. What I'm worried about more is that you guys will understand how this thing works, okay? So this is a little bit of video which is kind of outside of my comfort zone because it's, you know, because it discusses accounting, but the back solve method actually something which we usually, which we use in finance left and right. So from that perspective, I hope that this video was helpful not only to my students, but also to other people that are interesting to find out what is, what is this back solve method is. Okay? So I, I, I hope that this was helpful and I wish you great holidays and uh, for those guys that watch this video in my merger acquisition class, I'm looking forward to meeting you next semester. Have a great day. Bye.